Hello, my name is Dr. Dramatic Bull here with the Transfer Career Center. Um, and we're going to go over the arts and humanities, the careers in the arts and humanities. And this workshop was uh, curated and authored by uh, my intern, Masoom Mohammadi. So let's jump right into it. What are the arts and humanities? So they are an interdisciplinary study of literature, language, history, philosophy, religion, and fine arts. So aspects of human society and culture. They're the foundational pieces of how our society functions. And a lot of the majors include, but are not limited to, archaeology, comparative religion, history, literature, language and writing, media and communication studies, performing arts, philosophy, visual and studio arts. And there are many, many more majors that come out of the fields of arts and humanities. Um, oftentimes people conflate that these majors do not produce jobs, but we're gonna debunk that in a little bit because what most people do not know is that a lot of Fortune 500 CEO company um, leaders in the fields of entrepreneurship are arts and humanities majors. A lot of people in civic leadership in government come from the arts and humanities. So why why study these arts and humanities? Well, it allows us to foster social justice and equity by understanding the cultures, histories, and languages of others. For example, we mentioned that history was one of the uh, majors. Um, understanding the historical context of how societies came together, it's very imperative and helpful in developing and shaping policy right, in developing and shaping government. Um, that's why you find a lot of presidential candidates who come from that um, realm. Um, our former governor, um, Jerry Brown, was a arts and humanities major. So this is something that's very, very important that people sometimes seem to not understand, um, especially in the era of equity and social justice. Um, it also promotes creative, critical, and independent thinking. If you look at some of the majors like writing, literature, right, it fosters ingenuity, creativity, innovation, thought. These are very, very important creative thinking processes that help us troubleshoot and trouble solve our problems, but also allow people to imagine, right? You look at a lot of the novels that are written and works in literature to imagine the possibilities that, that could be in our future utopia. This is very, very instrumental um, for the human mind. Uh, a major in the arts and humanities also allows you to develop informed and analytical individuals. Obviously, if you're studying history, and you're very analytical in you know, making sure that history doesn't repeat itself, and you're equity focused, um, it allows you also to develop um, ingenuity and thought for how to uh, process problems and troubleshoot. Um, so that's a lot of critical thinkers come from that world. A major on the arts and humanities also allows us to feel connected to generations before us and those existing with us. And so that's why they call it more touchy-feely, right? You're able to really, because your artistic creativity allows you to delve back into the humanities, to study the classics, to study dance or religion, or culture um, or art um, or different you know aspects of, of the world um, it allows you to be more interconnected and this is very very important given the fact that we're moving towards a global society connected through the internet so in terms of universities <clears throat> where can you transfer well there are several universities you can transfer and there's several majors um, that are very very popular so amongst the UC system um, you can transfer to UCSD, you can study Chinese studies, you can study the classics, um, you can study dance, you can study history, literature, religion, um, Russian, third world studies. Right? At Berkeley, you can study African American studies, art history, East Asian languages, English, music, philosophy, theater. And this is very, very um, important as well because we know we need folks to study the philosophies um, 
the democratic principles in, this, in which this country was founded on was that of philosophers, right? Uh, Plato, and Aristotle, and, uh, and the more recent Locke, John Locke and Thomas Hobbes. These are very, very uh, instrumental principles in which we govern our livelihoods. Um, UCLA, they have African and Middle Eastern studies, Arabic, right? Asian religions, European studies, linguistics, Scandinavian languages and cultures. And then you also see from um, UC Davis up north, they have American studies, Chicago studies. Uh, this is very, very important, especially given the impact of ethnic studies, right, um, in our society. Um, Japanese, Native American studies, Middle Eastern, South Asian studies. And UC Irvine, Riverside, Merced, Santa Barbara, Santa Cruz, all the UCs have arts and humanities um, uh, majors. And so you can transfer to a plethora of UCs um, who, who offer that. As for the CSUs, there's quite a few. Right? We have San Diego State, has Africana Studies, the Classics, Comparative Literature, Dance and Humanities, Cal State San Marcos has Digital Media and Arts. This is very, very important nowadays, the impact of theater, right? Spanish history. Um, we see how film traditionally has evolved into more of a social justice theme now because there's documentaries allowing folks to re-examine um, past practices. I think about the 13th and how that documentary really looked, really looked at mass incarceration and the criminal justice system and produced policies to change, right? We look at how the Central Park Five and how that documentary or that docu-series through Netflix changed and you know brought forth um, to light a lot of injustices within our system. And so the used, um, theater and digital media and film to redesign how our future looks like currently is very, very important. Um, and you look at some of the greatest, you know, leaders. We, ha we have, you know, George Soros, who has a Bachelor of Science in Philosophy. You've got, you know, Oprah Winfrey, who has a Bachelor of Arts in Communication. Um, you know, you've got um, Conan O'Brien, famous, you know, celebrity on television. He's got a degree in history. Um, and so Clarence Thomas, the first African-American Supreme Court Justice, um, has a degree uh, in, in, in English. So these are, you know, instrumental folks that people may look at and say, wow, they, they're, they're doing this? They're so successful. You can't get a job with arts and humanities? That is completely false. Um, and then are just actors. You know, we shared with you um, earlier, the founders of um, the CEO of Starbucks, um, Fortune 500 company, um, also a graduate with a arts and humanities degree. So, what if you like? I want to do this. I want to, you know, do the arts and humanities degree. I want to do it here locally. Okay, well, let's let's think about that. How does that look like? UCSD has something called the PATH Project, which is preparing accomplished transfers to the humanities. It's a collaborative support program between our school districts, City Mesa and Miramar, um, and UCSD. And you can click on the link and watch a you know, very, very informative YouTube video about how this program works. There's a coordinator on your campus um, who you'll connect with. And once you enter into this program, you'll be paired with a mentor and have an opportunity to actually stay in the dorms at UCSD and experience the collegiate and university life prior to transferring. They have a very, very high successful rate of transfer as well. And this is something that's, that's amazing um, for folks to really look at because I think, you know, until you walk on those campuses, you won't truly get to experience the, the importance or the true um, experience of being at a university campus. So the PATH project is helping to redesign um, the UC system, particularly UCSD, in increasing the arts and humanities transfer. So you're like, oh, I am convinced I want to do this. 
I am convinced that I want to be a arts and humanities major. Well, what does UCSD have to offer? What, what does your local university have to offer? What is art history? And art history is a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, degree, given the fact that you know people don't understand how much art pieces themselves cost, how much money people can make out of them, how many documentaries, how many museums, right? Solicit these art pieces. Um, how many? You know, there's all these sales that go on, auctions, right? Dance is another one. Um, Chinese studies, classical studies, German studies. And oftentimes, because of our media coverage, you'll see that there are moments where subject matter experts are tapped, uh, given the regional area that they focus on. And so, uh, for example, China, because of trade now, people need folks that study that. Uh, I remember Russian, when things were going on with the Ukraine and Russia, people wanted to tap into uh, folks that have experience in that, in that, in that field. And so... Um, you never know where your opportunity comes from. Like I mentioned, Howard Schultz, Starbucks CEO, you know, graduated from Northern Michigan University in a bachelor's of communications degree, right? Um, Andrea Jung, Young, you know, she's the former A you know, CEO for Avion. Um, we have Michael Eisner, Eisner, who was the former Disney CEO. He graduated with a degree in English literature. Um, you know, you've got um, the CEO of HBO. Richard Plepper graduated with government from, from Marshall College. Um, you've got you know, Carla Fiorina, who is the CEO and former presidential candidate. She's the CEO of um, HP. Hewlett Packard, you know, she graduated from Stanford and medieval history and philosophy. She's a Republican presidential candidate. Um, the CEO of Whole Foods, John Mackey, graduated philosophy and religion. Um, we've got, you know, uh, Susan, uh, I believe her name is Wichiki, Wichikiki. she's the YouTube CEO. She graduated from Harvard with a bachelor's in history and literature. Um, the CEO of Chipotle, Steve Ells, um, and the list goes on. Um, so it's important that uh, we, we don't underestimate the careers that are possible within the fields of the arts and humanities. They're so complex. They're so wide. Um, they're not narrow because the artistic capacity of a lot of the people that are interested in these fields stems beyond the traditional eight to five um, career pathway, right? Because they're very stylistic. They're very um, entrepreneurship minded. They're, they can, they have a creative mind. Um, and so they are very, very um, unlimited and unbound in their potential to seek opportunities. And there's a lot of transferable skills that's needed. Earlier we talked about the capacity and the ability for folks to really, I mean, think outside the box. And that is imperative. That is imperative for a lot of businesses, especially in the times of crises, right? or in the times where we have to step it up to the next level. Um, so the artistic uh, capacity of folks is very, very important. And the, huma the humanities and studying history and how people traditionally dealt with problems so history doesn't repeat itself is extremely critical as well. So what can you do after graduation? You can be an art director, those art history majors that we talked about, right? You can be a fashion designer if you're interested in fashion and you know the multi billion dollar industry that fashion is. I mean, there's shows, there's clothes, it's consistently evolving. Um, you can be a web designer. You, we know how much imagery is so important in terms of marketing, right? Uh, you can be a stylist, you can, you can be a painter. And I'm talking about just a painter that comes in the house and paints. I'm talking about graffiti, art. Um, there are multi-millionaires who are painters. Um, game designers, we talked about the engine, again, Thinking outside the box, right? Designing games, the artistic capacity to do so. Animators, illustrators. You could be a gallery owner. You have your own art collection. You can be a photographer, um, sculptor. There's so many different fields. So, I mean, 
the basic ones may rise from a journalist $27,000 to 60 depending if you're freelancing or not um, museum curators again we see you know 40 to almost 72,000 dancers a philosopher could be a professor of philosophy we know a lot of folks that become lawyers a lot of our attorneys major in philosophy you have to be able to analyze a jury analyze your defense analyze the judge and be able to formulate coherent constructive thoughts of how to present your case properly so it is very very important using logos and ethos and all the stuff that you learn in your philosophy courses right we talked about corporate communications directors they make a lot of money redefining the narrative reframing thinking reconstructing what the reality may exist at that moment this requires thinking outside the box and creative thinking is something that's fluid through folks who major in the arts and humanities um, executive directors of films and companies and production uh, content strategists legal administrators content managing uh, marketing managers um, editors-in-chief how do they rewrite what you're trying to say and present it in a more uh, digestible manner right um, and a lot of our folks that major in the literature and arts and communication they figure this out um, foreign language and literature I mean there's professorships that are also available um, and at the bottom here you can look at the early career salary the mid career salary and the lifetime earnings so you know you could be a theologian and a priest and someone that's humble in their own abode um, that studies this you could be a writer you can produce books um, there are so many many things that you can do um, but given the fact that our careers are being blended more and more it is a archaic thought to say whoever majors in the arts and humanities um, is very very limited uh, won't get a job um, the job market could be difficult in certain uh, regional climates for example if there isn't a museum in a small town that you're at or there isn't you know much of an opportunity for to write at your local newspaper uh, but given the global market that we live in given the impact of social media and the income that it generates itself there is no limitation to folks in the arts and humanities in fact a lot of their majors are currently being constructed by them and that is very very important um, you have to understand that your career if you do decide to major in the arts and humanities you have some type of inclination you're very artistic or you love studying a lot of the majors that we talked about you love history you love philosophy you love languages you love traveling you look at Anthony Bourdain for example traveled the world and tasted food and looked at culture and produced his own um, TV series you could do that that is an artistic uh, capacity that he was you know blessed with as a chef and his ability to tell stories navigate different cultures and present that to the world was something that was very very beautiful and that's what folks with the artistic and humanities backgrounds do and so you know if you want to find out more information um, about this